Hello and welcome to the third wood framing wall plus getting started video. The purpose of this video is to show you how to modify vertical and horizontal framing elements and how to update or delete your frame in Revit using wood framing wall plus software. So let's navigate to the wall plus tool and then open up the framing configurations dialog. Then select the wall framing settings in the browser on the left. The purpose of wall framing settings is to control the configurations for the common stud elements and top and bottom plates. So if you look at the dialog, you can see that we have some specific tabs at the top which represent specific elements and the framing offset configurations. So first we have vertical stud configurations, then there are horizontal top and bottom plate configurations, and then the framing offset configurations. Each tab contains some specific parameters and custom join configurations with the symbolic preview window at the bottom, which helps you understand how the framing elements will be placed in the wall. So now let's look at the settings. So the first setting that we see is Add Studs. We can choose to have our frame with or without vertical studs. In the previous video, we amended the vertical stud spacing. This setting defines how far apart will our vertical studs be in the frame. So we will bring it back to 600. Then we have the first last spacing menu, which defines the vertical stud offset direction. So if we use for first, then the spacing will begin on the left side of the start of the wall. Uh, if we stand in front of the exterior face, then use for last, well, spacing will begin on the opposite side. If we use for both, then both ends of wall will have the same spacing at the start and at the end of the wall. Stud in center function will place the stud in the center of the wall. And finally, spacing in center will put the defined spacing at the center of the wall. Just below the spacing settings, we have the custom join configuration where we can add or remove framing elements and control their position within the frame. The first setting on the left is called the X position. So for example, we can choose left or we can also choose right and you will notice how the symbolic preview indicates that our stud is now on the right hand side of the line, we'll put it back into the center. Also notice two letters, I which stands for interior and E for exterior of the wall. These two letters will help you understand the framing element position in the building context. We also have count, which defines the number of identical elements, or in this case, the number of identical studs that will stand on their own. We can increase to two studs if we want to, or maximum three, or we can reduce it to zero. And then we can change our stud type from the list of our loaded framing families. It's also very important to select the stud families for vertical stud elements and plate families for horizontal plates. Then we have the defined depth by layer thickness. So if our chosen stud type thickness is different from our linked wall layer, then the software will automatically create a new stud type in order to fit the wall layer thickness. And we can also rotate our framing element by 90 degrees or flip its facing. We can also change spacing from the center line of the stud and we press enter. Once we enter the number, I will put it back to zero and press enter again. And then we have the position of the stud and we have multiple options, for example, external, internal, external outside or internal outside. I will put it back the way it was to the center. And we will skip the remaining settings and move on to the new item button. So if we press this button, we can insert a new element. We can also move it up or down within the element list, or we can simply remove it if we don't need it. And let's move on to the top and bottom plates. The first thing you'll notice is that each plate configuration has two of its own additional tabs. So for example, in the top plate tab, we can control the settings for the top plate. In the top cover tab, meanwhile, we can add and control an additional plate above the top of the wall, unless your offsets define it otherwise. Same principles apply to the bottom elements of the frame. For instance, in the first tab, 
we can control the bottom plates, while in the bottom pad tab, we can add and control plates below the bottom of the wall. Keep in mind that for horizontal plate elements, we always use plate families. Do not use stud families for horizontal framing elements. Okay, so let's make some changes to the plates. We will reduce the count from two to one for top and for the bottom plates of the wall. The last tab in the wall framing settings is offsets. We can control the offsets from the top and from the bottom of the frame. These settings are useful when we want different framing layers to have different heights. In this example, the vertical nailer top offset has been increased to reach the top of the upper floor joists. Okay, so let's just save our configuration and update our frame. So let's go ahead and pick our wall and then let's open it up in the 3D view using the section box tool so that we isolate our wall. I will just zoom in a bit. Okay, so okay, so there are a few ways that we can update our frame. And the first function is called update frame, which is which you can see in our wall plus panel. However, it's important to note that this command should only be used when the framing configurations have not been updated, but rather when changes were made in the architectural model, for example, the wall became longer or shorter or higher, or for example, an opening was moved, deleted or added. There are two ways to update the wall frame after framing configurations have been updated or the new configuration has been linked to the wall. For example, you can select the wall instance, then hit the frame wall command, and then delete and reframe the wall. However, the most common solution is to select the wall instance or any framing element within that wall, then click on modify other menu and choose update by wall link. By updating the wall frame using our tool, you no longer need to waste your time and energy on changing the framing elements manually. And that's it. The wall frame has now been updated. Now, as you can see, the studs are spaced at 600 millimeters again. In the meantime, we only have one plate at the top and at the bottom of the frame. And the final thing that I will show you is how to delete our frame. So what we want to avoid is deleting elements one by one or deleting elements after selecting all of them and filtering them out. The correct way to delete our framing elements is to either select one framing element or the wall. And then we navigate to our tool and press delete frame. And that's it. The frame has been deleted and is not visible in neither view. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In our next Wood Framing Wall Plus Getting Started video, we are going to look at wall connection configurations. Until the next time.